The Tom Woods Show, episode 442. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. If you need a telephone solution for your business that answers your calls, routes your calls, and transcribes voice messages into emails and texts, then get your free 30-day trial at eVoice through tomwoods.com slash eVoice. Hey everybody, Tom Woods here, talking about the situation in Greece today. What a case study in what not to do. So we may as well get a silver lining out of this and at least learn something. Of course, you and I already know what the lessons are, but the rest of the world doesn't. But what I'd like to do is get into the weeds here a bit, get into some of the details of how Greece got itself into this mess and what exactly the future may hold, what's going on right now. And joining us today to talk about this is Nick Giambruno, who returns to the program. He is senior editor at Doug Casey's internationalman.com. I will link to our previous conversation about how to diversify internationally and the need to do that on the show notes page for today, which is tomwoods.com slash 442. Remember, if you are thinking of starting up that blog or website, which I'm always hectoring you to do, don't do anything until you read my free ebook on how to do that without having to learn programming or design. What do you think somebody like me knows about that stuff? Not much. And yet I have some flourishing websites that are very attractive. So how that's done, it's all explained at tomwoods.com slash publicity. Now, why is it at slash publicity? Well, it's because I'm making you an offer that before you start that website or blog, if you read what I say at tomwoods.com slash publicity, I will give your new website or blog some free publicity. I have a pretty big audience, and I will get that site out to them. So check out the details there. Let's talk to Nick right now. Nick, thanks for coming back onto the show. Hey, Tom. Great to be with you. I had initially resisted doing an episode on Greece for the simple reason that when I do episodes on other countries, people don't listen (laughs) for whatever reason. If people don't want to listen, I won't do them. And and for example, for years, there would be financial, maybe not financial newsletters, but political newsletters that would go out in your email that you would always delete, but everybody would delete them if they had the word euro in the title. Nobody cared, so just delete them. But I finally decided that they do care about Greece, actually, because this is such a stunning state of affairs and series of events that have taken place. We have to talk about it. It could have very significant long-term consequences. And of course, internally within Greece, uh, just leaving out the the IMF and all the other countries that are involved, Greece itself is a standing warning, of course, of what not to do. You know, don't get yourself in a situation like this by adopting a socialist mentality. If they hadn't had a socialist mentality, they wouldn't be in this situation to, to, to begin with. You've been writing about this over at Casey Research's International Man website. So give me your overview, how you see things, Over the past couple of weeks, what's going on in Greece for a man from Mars coming to the U.S., and he's reading headlines and doesn't know what to make of what's going on in Greece? He's seeing things like, capitalism has failed in Greece. I've actually seen that. I think that was in The Guardian, that capitalism has failed in Greece. Uh, I've seen all kinds of stories about what the problem is. What's the problem? Well, um, capitalism clearly hasn't failed in Greece because it wasn't in Greece. Um, What has failed... And why Greece is so important is that it illustrates uh, so many uh, different themes uh, that are that are important to everybody, not just Europeans, not just uh, Greeks. And what has happened here is that it has revealed the Greece has revealed you know the the totally unsound nature of of the banking system that the whole world basically operates on, and that's you know a fractional reserve banking system. So that's something that's you know relevant to pretty much everybody on this earth. Um, but it also reveals that uh, this whole bailout model where you can kick the can down the road and not really be fiscally responsible, uh, you know, all this Keynesianism, that it, it's really shown how, how that has failed too. So um, it is not just a little uh, issue tied to some European country that most people have no connection to. It, it really reveals some of the larger uh, economic fallacies that are present in the world today, and that's why it's so important. We're 
talking right now, we're recording this on uh, July 8th, 2015. This will be broadcast uh, tomorrow, July 9th. So in case some dramatic thing happens in the next 24 hours, there are riots that burn down the whole place. We didn't know about them, but we're as close as we can possibly get. We just had this referendum that came out voting no. What was the referendum all about? And I've seen libertarians cheering the no vote, and I've seen libertarians exasperated that anyone could possibly cheer the no vote. Where do you guys come down on that? And for, so for first, what was it all about? And then secondly, what do you think is the correct way to look at it? Well, it was about the Greek prime minister taking the proposal for these austerity measures to the Greek people for uh, a, you know, a referendum so that every Greek could voice their opinion on it. Um, I, I see it a couple of different ways. I, I think, um, you know, from a moral standpoint, you know, they borrowed that money and, you know, that's, you know, their responsibility to pay for it. But on the other hand, voting no, which, you know, they did, um, also helps reveal, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, some of the just unsound practice, economic practices that are in the world today, namely the fractional reserve banking model and the, this, you know, this bailout model and also, you know, the, the government spending stimulus uh, socialism model, too. So um, I, think, I think you can look at it both ways um, in the sense that, yes, uh, yeah, they do have, you know, they did borrow that money. And, you know, theoretically, they should be uh, morally obliged to pay it back. The Greek, well, the Greek government did. I don't know how you can, you know, put that responsibility on every Greek individual, but anyways, uh, that's besides the point for now because it's it, what it's done is it's revealed, you know, the, 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 these cracks in the unsound banking system. So by voting no, it really put into question um, how solvent these Greek banks can be without further uh, aid from uh, the ECB, the European Central Bank, and and these other global organizations. Uh, they really couldn't stand on their their feet by themselves. And you know we've all seen the images on TV and in the newspaper of people lined up, you know lines going out around the block of people trying to get as much cash out of an ATM or a bank as possible. And that just shows you that you know the bank doesn't have not just the Greek banks. It's you know basically all the banks in the world. And when you look at a conventional bank, they don't have all of the customers' deposits. It's really Really kind of strange. So if everybody came and asked for their money back, it's not there. And it doesn't even have to be everybody. It just has to be a fraction. 10%, maybe 5% will, will cause a, a bank to collapse because it's uh, practicing what I would view as a fraudulent, uh, you know, practice of unsound, uh, of fractional reserve banking. Um, I don't need to get into the nuts and bolts of that, but essentially, you know, they are um, lending out more money than they can uh, take than they can give to the depositors if they come and demand for it, demand their cash. And there's a really good article on the International Man site called Unsound Banking um, that uh, I can send to you that you can link to that really gives a good explanation of that. So that that's it reveals that. Um, it also reveals that uh, the whole idea of bailing out Greece uh, didn't work. You know, it ju they just kicked the can down the road. And, you know, if they're going to find a way to negotiate further bailouts, it's not going to fundamentally solve anything. It will might delay the problem a little bit further. But the no vote, the idea behind the no vote was that so that the Greek government could go to the negotiations and say, look, um, I've taken your demands to the Greek people, and Greece is a democracy, and they've rejected it. So what do you want me to do? Do you want me to act like a dictator and impose these uh, austerity measures, which have been democratically rejected? He thought that would give them, uh, give, give the Greek side more negotiating leverage. Now, that's re where we are right now, it remains to be seen if that's the case, or whether the Europeans will just walk away from it. So we don't know um, what is going to happen, but I would also differentiate uh, defaulting is not the same as leaving uh, the eurozone. Um, there are other geopolitical reasons that might trump economic reasons to keep Greece in, you know, kind of a Western orientation in the EU, the eurozone, and, and so forth. Um, and you know, you've seen uh, the Greek prime minister flirting with Putin a little bit too. So, and Greece is a strategic country. It's a NATO country. It's um, in a strategic area, so you know there might at the end of the day you could possibly see um, geopolitical concerns trump economic concerns, and they might uh, cave in to Greece and say, "Look, you know, we'll give you 
we'll, we'll uh, meet some of your demands and you can effectively stay in the euro and we'll kick the can down the road a little further. So that's where the situation's at today. Let me read you an excerpt from an article by David Stockman, who's been a guest on this show a number of times, and get your thoughts on it. I mean, the whole article should probably be read. He says, A clean default on this massive burden of official debt is in order for two reasons. First, Greece's government never asked for the giant bailouts of 2010 and 2012, which transferred their onerous debts to the world's taxpayers. The $250 billion outstanding was forced upon them by Brussels and IMF officialdom in order to protect the German, French, Dutch, Italian, and other banks, and to ensure that when the markets opened on innumerable Monday mornings, there would be no inconvenient turmoil on the stock exchanges or in the bond pits. Secondly, the Troika, he's talking about the ECB, the IMF, and I guess the, the EU, uh, cannot give honest debt relief anyway. That's because, that's because officialdom is now petrified of their own taxpayers, whom they have betrayed and baldly lied to from the very beginning. And then he goes on and talks about how much they are, these, these struggling economies, when you look at uh, Italy, which is buried under a 130% debt-to-GDP ratio, and France, which is you know, in, in terrible shape, you know, they're, they're, they're on the hook for this, and they, they can't turn around and go to their taxpayers and say, well, we've relieved the, the Greek debt. So he's talking about all this. So he's saying, in other words, that overwhelmingly, it's either governments or institutions that are connected to governments, like the ECB, that are really the institutions that are now caught up in the Greek debt, and his view is Greece can't possibly be saved by any package they could possibly come up with anyway, and the whole rotten system of other governments bailing out other, other governments ought to just come to an end and crash down once and for all. Yes, I completely agree with that. And it's also, uh, you know, the morally correct thing to do because uh, you look at all this debt and it's all strapped on the backs of, of the Greeks and, you know, gen for generations to come. And really, you know, they didn't, you know, like David said, a lot of these Greeks didn't ask, didn't ask for this crushing debt. Um, so, yes, I think that would be, uh, you know, the, the right choice, too. I don't think they're going to do it because, um, as you mentioned as well, it will also um, encourage uh, citizens and other governments that are much bigger than Greece to say, hey, look, we've got a lot of debt, too. Why do, why do we have to pay off this debt? And, you know, that could call, call the whole uh, EU, uh, uh, you know, system into question. And that's not what, um, you know, the people in Brussels or the people in D.C. want to happen. They want to keep uh, a, a strong, unified, and stronger centralized bureaucracy in Europe that uh, gives them geopolitical leverage. So I think that is, they're not going to, they should do it, but they're, they're not going to. You have an article in which you talk about capital controls in Greece and a, a bank holiday. Uh, these are uh, these sound a lot nicer than the realities really are. A bank holiday may, may even sound like a nice thing. Uh, what exactly is going on there, and why is the regime doing these things? Why does any regime do those things? Oh, sure, and it's it's actually really interesting because it's a textbook example of government uh, propaganda. It's obviously, uh, you know, not any sort of holiday where you'd be celebrating, you know, popping champagne or shooting fireworks off or anything like that. It's not a happy thing. You know, I've compared it to calling, you know, getting mugged on the street a, a surprise party. So what happens with a bank holiday is where they um, come out in a surprise and shut down the banking system. And that means you can't access, you know, your funds like you were able to. It's kind of scary. I mean, imagine you not being able to get the money you need to pay for the electricity, to pay for food, and so forth. Um, and this, this is always interesting because whenever there is something like this, you always have government officials come up on TV or they come up on, on the, you know, in the media, and they deny that, oh, we'd never consider a bank holiday or capital controls. This will never happen. You know, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're crazy. Why would you say something like this? And in fact, this, ha this has happened so many times over. Um, so whenever you hear a government official or a central banker deny that something is going to happen, bad is going to happen to bank depositors, it's probably going to happen, and it's probably going to happen soon. Just the fact that they're up there denying it is, is, a, is a big clue. Um, well, what are these things? Define them oh, for the sure. layman. 
Sure. Uh, well, okay. Well, like I said before, a bank holiday is where they just um, shut down the whole banking system uh, on a surprise. So um, you can't access. And, and how, okay. So how does that benefit them? I mean, I guess it's. I, I know it's obvious, but maybe it's not for some people. Well, it's all capital controls in a bank holiday is all about optimizing the amount of money or wealth that's available for a government in crisis to steal. Simply put, um, so when the banking system is shut down. The money can't leave the country. I mean, anybody in their right mind wouldn't want to keep their life savings in a Greek bank right now because the Greek, there's, you know, the, there's so many examples in history where a government gets into financial trouble and they, you know, they'll have, they'll devalue the currency, they'll raid bank accounts, um, they'll levy taxes on bank deposits. These things happen. So the the reason a bank uh, holiday has to come as a surprise because is because they have to catch people by surprise. Because if people knew a bank holiday was coming, they know things are much worse than the government and the media is, is letting off, and they would get the money out of the country. The government and, uh, doesn't want this, of course, because they want to optimize the amount of wealth that's available for them to harvest in, in, in these cases. Now, capital controls are very, uh, they often you know, come with a banking holiday. And simply put, capital controls are just restrictions on moving money outside of the country. They can come in all sorts of shapes and forms, but um, that's basically what it is. It's to prevent money from leaving the country. It could come in the, they could come in the form of a tax. They might say, hey, you can take money out of the country, but you're going to pay a 20% tax on that money. They could say, well, you can't take any money out of the country. Um, so there's a couple of different variations of what they can do, but it's basically restrictions on the free flow of money out of the country. And it's always a sign that things are not good. So uh, what exactly is going on in Greece with r regard to this? Uh, how would that affect the average person in Greece to, to learn that this has been imposed? Well, they would be limited on the amount of money that they can get. Um, they wouldn't be able to, for example, if they had a bank account in Germany, if they had a bank account in Italy or Switzerland, they wouldn't be able to move money from the Greek bank account to the foreign bank account. And when it's in a foreign bank account, it's out of the reach of the Greek politicians. So if they decide, oh, we're going to you know, tax bank deposits, or we're going to confiscate bank deposits, or we're going to have a bail-in like they had in Cyprus, they can't reach money that's in an offshore or foreign bank. And that's exactly one of the main reasons why you would want to do that when, if you live in a, not just anybody, not just Greeks, but you know, anybody who, who wants to diversify their political risk, but especially people who have governments who are fiscally irresponsible. Um, they would also uh, be limited, and they are limited. The, the banking system is literally, <clears throat> excuse me, running out of cash in Greece because they are allowing limited ATM withdrawals. I think it's 50 or 60 euros per day um, at the maximum. So people are just taking all the money they can out of the ATMs. And because of this fractional reserve banking system, these Greek banks don't have all the money if all the if even a fraction of the depositors demand cash the whole banking system will come down because the banks simply don't have that cash they've lent it out on a scale much larger than um just simply taking in you know somebody's uh money as a deposit and 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 loaning it out it, 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 it it's there's not much money there um, so it doesn't take much to tip over to tip over uh, the banking system and that's what's happening now because uh, if the Greek banks don't get, you know, we're talking right now on July 8th, if the Greek banks don't get an infusion of cash, they're going to run out of money and they're going to be, uh, they are insolvent, but it'll be apparently uh, they're insolvent, uh, you know, in a matter of days. So that, that's what happens. And that's also exactly why uh, one would want to diversify to mitigate against this risk, because really it can happen uh, anywhere that, where a country falls into uh, financial and economic troubles. Nick, let's pause for a moment for this brief message. Folks, you know I travel quite a bit. I'm on the go. I also have five kids. I'm always running around somewhere. So I need to be able to field my business calls when I'm on the go, or when I'm in the office, or when I'm at home. And that's why, for my own business, Liberty Classroom, I've used eVoice to get my toll-free business number. And it's been tremendous. There's an auto attendant that answers every call 24-7, with a professional greeting customized for my business. I can even have custom menu options with multiple extensions. And even if I don't have a person at each of those extensions, I could still do it, have them all routed to my voicemail, and give the impression that I've got one heck of a business. 
It also takes voicemail messages and transcribes them into text messages that it sends me on my smartphone. Give it a try. Get a free month through TomWoods.com slash eVoice. A free month through TomWoods.com slash eVoice. It's interesting, as we were saying earlier, that we can be in a situation in which officials in the Greek government reach conclusions that are not terribly remote from the conclusions that somebody like David Stockman is reaching, albeit for different reasons. And so I, for example, can look at this and say, I feel like the Greek regime is just corrupt through and through, and the political culture of Greece is rotten to the core with socialist so-called morality defining it and putting the Greeks in this position. It's their own stinking fault that they're in this rotten position. But at the same time, I would like to see Greece default because up until now there has been a falsification of risk because people think that that a regime like Greece simply can't possibly default or it will always be bailed out. So we will continue to make loans and make loans and make loans and one way or another we'll see if we can get these loans onto the backs of taxpayers at one point or another. But maybe if Greece does default and, and does stiff the creditors, that this sends a message that you do actually have to engage in risk calculations once again when you make loans and you cannot assume that so-called sovereign debt is somehow sacred and that there will always be an accommodating bailout package. Yeah, I completely agree. That is, uh, you know, a sound analysis. Um, and it, yeah, it, it is rather interesting that uh, two people, uh, you know, at the opposite kind of ends of the individualist and collectivist spectrum can come to the same conclusion, like you said, but for very different reasons on, on this issue. But uh, yeah, I agree with David Stockman. I think it, I think that uh, is is very important that they default. But like I mentioned before, I don't. I, I think they should do it, but I don't think they will do it. Let me ask you about Doug himself. Now, I, you know, he, everybody understands that you're not you're not him, and he's not implicated in anything you say. But I am curious about what Casey Research in general is thinking about this, because I know you have a slogan that may be borrowed from somebody else. It may be Doug's own slogan about the time to invest is when there's blood in the streets. It was something like that. That in other words, there are times when everybody else would be scared away. That's your time to capitalize. Is there any upside in Greece? Is there anything to do in Greece other than run away? Well, actually, you know, surprisingly, there is. Um, it, and you know that is a it is an interesting quote because it tells you uh, it can really captures the essence of what uh, you know Doug and I are involved with uh, also and that's uh, looking at markets in crisis around the world and investing in them crisis investing um, it's really where you can pick up some remarkable bargains on on quality companies so where in Greece where in the world would anybody want to invest in Greece now there is actually one industry in Greece that the Greeks have been you know, it's in their blood. They've been doing it for hundreds of years, thousands of years, and that's shipping. Um, and it's also interesting because this is a business that's completely out of reach as of now of the Greek government. Um, it's not taxed because all of the operations ha happen offshore um, in, you know, in all around the world. So it's not, uh, you know, the Greek government can't tax it. And they've also have a, an arrangement with the industry that they can't tax it. And if the Greek government decided one day, oh, well, I guess we do want to tax it. Well, it's very easy for those companies to just up and move to Dubai or to Singapore uh, and so forth. So it's, I, think, I, I think there's a good chance that they're, not, they're going to keep their favorable status. So the way to look at it is you can, if you can find, and you know, shipping, the shipping industry has its problems of its own, but there are a few bright spots in it. And if you can find those bright spots and you can find the quality Greek companies that are uh, beaten up from this crisis, but really have nothing to do with it and are not going to be affected, you make some, you can, we think you can look at, look at it and find some good bargains in that, in that area. So is that what International Man is all about, or is, is, is going around the world to look for places to invest, and it's also about going around the world, though, to take what you have earned from those investments and diversify where you've got them. It's, it's just Give us another, because I know we talked about this in the past, but I'm increasingly interested in this sort of subject, and I know my listeners are as well. Uh, tell us what exactly it is that you guys are up to with this International Man project. Sure. Yeah, well, it, finding the best investments around the world, that is certainly uh, part of it. Uh, it's not all of it. Uh, you know, the, 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 the main idea 
is to diversify your political risk or diversify your exposure to uh, any one country so that you're not dependent on it. And in that way, you can live um, uh, much freer. And that doesn't mean you have to move and leave the U.S., for example, but it, it means maybe your, some of your money does. And owning, you know, having some money uh, stored in, in, uh, in a safe banking jurisdiction just kind of makes sense no matter what. I mean, why would you want to keep your money in uh, an unsound U.S. bank that is highly leveraged and, you know, in a banking system where, you know, the FDIC, you know, if there's even one major uh, bank that goes bust, it can't cover all of those depositors. So it's not really a, that safe of an environment. Uh, why, and, you know, and plus, it's, you, know, you can put some money that's out of reach, uh, you know, not totally out of reach, but, you know, it it's puts up some pretty high hurdles for uh, bureaucrats in your home country to get. So it makes sense to look at, you know, banking and sound jurisdictions uh, in any case. So, yeah, that's part of it. It's also about... Um, you know, looking at ways to get multiple citizenships, second passports, uh, and that kind of stuff. And when you have multiple, and, you know, again, this doesn't mean you have to leave, but, you know, when you have a uh, second citizenship, for, I have an, an Italian passport, for example, because uh, I have Italian heritage, and I, that was, I was able to claim uh, citizenship there. Um, you know, it gives you options if you ever want to live, work, uh, invest in different countries around the world. And it's, it, it's basically all about... Um, reducing your dependency on any one country. Um, and in that way, you really can live a freer life. Well, the show notes page for today is tomwoods.com slash 442. We will link to internationalman.com. Of course, I've just said it, so maybe you remember it, but we'll also link to it there. We'll link to the article you mentioned, Unsound Banking. We'll link to the article you sent me a little while ago that you wrote about the situation in Greece. I'll link to David Stockman on Greece, and we'll see if we can dig out of one or two other things. So that will be the place to go, the clearinghouse for this episode, tomwoods.com slash 442. Any parting words from Nick Bruno before we say goodbye? No, I think we covered uh, pretty much everything. And yeah, I think the situation in Greece... Uh, reveals a, a number of lessons that we talked about, but you know, um, first and foremost, it shows the need to internationalize and really reduce your dependency on on um, you know any single country. And if you know the Greeks had ample time to you know just do the most basic step, and that's open a bank account in a, another European or EU country. And you know they had ample time to do this. They had years. And if they would have just taken that simple step, they could have really uh, protected themselves from what is to come. And it looks like uh, what is to come is not good for the depositors in Greek banks. So um, it's, it's, it's a lesson to you know take action now before it's too late. Well, stirring parting words indeed. Nick, thanks again for being with us today. Yes, thank you, Tom. All right, everybody, check out today's show notes page, tomwoods.com slash 442. We'll have stuff related to this topic. We will also have my free resources, my free ebook on starting that blog or website, my video showing you how to do it in about five minutes, so no more excuses, my offer to give you free publicity, my free audiobook offer, my freebies offer for people who join ronpaulhomeschool.com. It's all there on this and future show notes pages, tomwoods.com slash 442. Thanks for listening, everybody. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit tomwoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time.